with continued practice, we're able to discover some other things from our quadratics. So maybe, for example, all I really care about on a particular quadratic is, does it have a maximum value or does it have a minimum value? And if so, where are those at? Well, to determine those, there's two pieces of information I need to, to use that we've already learned. First of all, I want to know, does this particular graph open up or down? And we determine that by the coefficient of the x squared. And the coefficient here is a negative, negative three, but a negative is all that we're really concerned about. So since it's a negative, we know that we have some graph somewhere out here that opens downwards. And that tells me that that particular function will have a maximum value. There's no other value that's higher than this point right there that corresponds to some y and it corresponds to some x. And that's its maximum value of this particular function. And that might be of interest to us. Where is the maximum at? So how do we turn the maximum? Well, we determine it by determining its vertex. Because this is our horizontal shift, some, some h up some k. But because it's not in that standard form, it's in this form, I remember that my vertex was, was described as negative b over 2a and the function evaluated at negative b over 2a. So let's find that out. Negative b, 6, all over 2 times a, which is a negative 3, negative 6 over negative 6 equals a positive 1. Let me remove this graph. So that tells me then that I have my maximum value occurring at the x-coordinate of 1. So how do we find its corresponding y-coordinate? By plugging 1 into the function and seeing what its value is when x is 1. So f evaluated at 1 equals negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 minus 13 negative 3, 1 squared, so that's negative 3, plus 6, minus 13. That equals 3 minus 13 equals a negative 10. So I see that I have a vertex at the point 1 and negative 10. If I graph that gently, boom, 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 1, 2, 3, and 10. That's my vertex. The graph opens downwards. So my maximum value occurs at x equals 1, and that maximum value is negative 10. We can also determine if a graph has a minimum value. Same procedure. The only difference, again, is we'll look at its corresponding a. And if that corresponding a is a positive value, then we know that the graph will produce an upward-looking graph that will have a minimum value. And when we determine where does that occur at, in the same way, locate its vertex, and that will help us discover where its minimum value is at.